Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ching Hua. I'm the PhD candidate candidate uh, at CQ, uh, Kent University. My thesis is entitled Measuring Aesthetic Values of Literary Tradition of Chinese Ink Painting and Calligraphy. I will present the, our research uh, under following uh, orders, research questions, objectives, significance, literature review, methodology, research plan, and the summary. And uh, the research question is, uh, is there a link between the designated period art forms and the modern fractal notion of chaos theory? Can the aesthetic values of these art forms be measured? Can the measured aesthetic values be utilized to produce computer imageries and animations based on the traditional style using the notion of fractal theories? So the objective will be uh, in several aspects. Um, firstly, we uh, fractal, using the fractal dimension value will be used to um, fingerprint the art and the calligraphy, and a method of encoding the calligraphy uh, that can uh, reproduce uh, designated graphic styles, and uh, an analysis of the period uh, master's art to evaluate the fractal dimension of the strokes in drawings, such as rocks, trees, mountains, clouds, and fishes, and so on, and uh, so as to be able to reproduce them. And uh, lastly, we are transforming the strokes uh, while preserving the fractal dimension to produce a similar but new animated art forms based on the Tang or Song calligraphy and artwork styles. So uh, I think the significance of the uh, research will be uh, in three aspects. Firstly, the authentication. And uh, there are quite a few anonymous works throughout the history that are hard to determine whose work they are. Hence, we might now have a tool to actually measure the works, provide the numerical matchups uh, with some historical works as a way of authentication. And uh, secondly, we might uh, be able to reproduce reproduction of the stylized font and imagery. And now uh, we might be able to use the algorithm in a refer reverse way to generate new fonts that bears the characteristics of the designated artists. Creating new fonts types uh, of Chinese characters is always a very hard, challenging job. There might be some uh, market uh, for this application in that area. And then lastly, uh, we can uh, maybe um, produce a learning tool. We might be able to construct some application software to help learners of Chinese calligraphy to test their progress by comparing their works with the example works. This might uh, accelerate their personal improvement. So the literature review is mainly on three aspects, and uh, a study of Chinese aesthetics and its similarity with the chaos theory and its notion of fractal. And uh, we also need to learn, uh, need to study uh, using the, uh, the fractal dimension value as a measurement in various domains. And uh, thirdly, uh, we need to study the Chinese calligraphy and its history and its criteria and the previous study of its aesthetics uh, so, firstly, we need to study the Chinese aesthetics. Uh, the characteristic and uh, the unique characteristic of Chinese art and aesthetics may be reflected by some uh, question, initial questions when a Western viewer uh, first encountered Chinese art. Uh, questions such as uh, why Chinese painting, Chinese painting are often in long vertical or horizontal scrolls, and where is the horizon feature, horizon, which is the typical feature in Western uh, art and pictures, and uh, where is the vanishing point in the picture? Uh, why does uh, the Chinese paintings seem to be flat? Uh, what's up with the perspectives? And uh, why is the subject matters of painting mostly of bizarre natural forms, such as trees, rocks, mountains? And uh, so the third uh, question going goes further. What underpins such an approach of aesthetics and uh, I draw a little comparison between these two. Uh, Western art, when I talk Western art here, is basically the traditional classic Western art. 
it seems that since Renaissance time, uh, Western art has a very intimate relationship with uh, science. The, a lot of the appearance is actually under, uh, is defined by the underlying um, uh, scientific knowledge and uh, uh, understanding. For example, proportion and the golden ratio of human figure and uh, uh, surface qualities. Uh, Western art always emphasizes on volume and the bulkness and the single point perspectives so that to create three dimensional space sense of space and uh, lights are always emphasize on lights and thus uh, emphasis on colors the uh, relationship between colors so in a one word uh, uh, in one sentence uh, i think uh, western art is trying to provide viewers with multiple parallel visual informations so that to rearouse reproduce a, a sense of reality and uh, Chinese art, in the, on the other hand, uh, always seems to be flat, and uh, there's no speci uh, specific uh, light source, not, uh, no lights almost, and uh, very vague, very uh, limited uh, perspectives, almost no perspective, uh, and also uh, no emphasis on surface qualities, and the very preliminary colors. When Chinese critics discuss uh, the quality of Chinese art, they may basically discuss uh, uh, the uh, brush marks, the quality of lines and the brush marks. So this is the, uh, give you some uh, uh, visual idea. Now, when you draw a painting, for example, a structure like a bamboo structure, uh, you need to do is first appropriate certain uh, elemental strokes, such as the uh, first uh, single leaf, uh, what's the shape of single leaf, and then you put them into the various elemental uh, configurations, such as two leaves, three leaves, four and five, and then you deploy these elemental uh, basic structures across the images uh, at your free will, and uh, together with the uh, elemental uh, brush uh, of the branches as well. So. And the uh, same uh, principle applies to drawing other uh, subject matters, such as trees. You start with the uh, branching the uh, twigs, and then uh, and then the outline of uh, of uh, of the trees. And uh, once you have uh, appropriate several uh, element, uh, elemental fundamental strokes, and then you repeat it across the images. Uh, same with the leaves as well. As you can see, different type of leaves, different cluster of the leaves. And, uh, and they are in uh, several configurations, and two or three or four, five in maximum, maybe six and seven. And then, after all, uh, you, you configure, uh, put them into a picture. Uh, it will automatically create this sort of uh, configuration that uh, resembles the natural uh, forms, configurations, and a, a sense of scenery uh, uh, build up on, on top of that. So uh, this is kind of principle is quite continual to some of the methods of modern uh, computer graphics, such as this one. Uh, they try to create an uh, illustrative style of uh, 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 rendering 3D uh, trees. What they do is they appropriate, uh, as in graphic A, appropriate certain elemental shapes of the leaves in relation to the camera. And then when, you, when they put into real rendering, they uh, replace the position in, in according to, uh, in relation to the camera. And with some variations, you will create uh, all other kind of uh, uh, styles. And that's created the illustrative uh, style of the trees, 3D trees. And so the painting of Chinese painting uh, becomes a means of tuning oneself to the to the intrinsic uh, underlying uh, intrinsic uh, uh, method of uh, nat nature, the way of nature generate uh, fractal forms, fra uh, intricate forms, and this underlying uh, force or underlying rules uh, is uh, in Chinese belief uh, the the Taoism's belief of the way, the path, and uh, this is quite intricate underlying force or uh, ultimate reality that manifests itself to various forms. And uh, you can't actually talk about that through, uh, uh, through words. It's ineffable. Therefore, uh, they usually use uh, esoteric diagrams and graphics to represent it. Uh, this is also very continual to like uh, chaos theories. Uh, some of the rules of chaos theory is hard to explain by an ordinary world because it's out of ordinary sense. So therefore, they uh, uh, scientists of chaos theory also use a lot of charts, diagrams to uh, to visualize, to to help to understand the behavior. 
And uh, so the similarity is obvious here. Uh, as you can see on the uh, right is the yin yang symbol of Taoism. And uh, on your left is the uh, mathemat uh, mathematical face image. Uh, the similarity is very obvious. Uh, the origin uh, of the uh, yin yang symbol, where does it came from, is, uh, is lost. And, uh, uh, but uh, the meaning of that is very vague uh, and the first uh, debate and dis discussion. But uh, on, on your left, the face image very, is very clear that it represents a kind of dynamic uh, system uh, that has a very chaotic system, but has some kind of equilibrium uh, status, two kind of equilibrium status. And uh, in between these two equilibrium status, the, the, it's an entanglement of uh, different type of uh, behavior that represents the cha chaotic behavior. So I'm, my guess is that uh, maybe the ancient uh, uh, sages of uh, Taoist, uh, Taoist sages say is actually uh, viewing this world as kind of dynamic, uh, the dynamic chaotic behavior. It's 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 uh, you can't predict its uh, uh, near term, uh, uh, short term movements, but uh, in the long term you can have uh, some sort of patterns. Uh, this is one of the result of that. Uh, the symbol of yin yang represents that kind of uh, uh, study. Uh, also, uh, I draw several parallels between the art theories and some of the uh, notions of fractal. <clears throat> For example, the subject matters uh, I mentioned before are predominantly uh, trees, rocks, weeds, all the natural uh, branching structures. and. Uh, and now it seems to make sense that, that all these forms belong to one category. According to Kier theory, it all belongs to the fractal forms. And the other concept of Chinese painting is this uh, elusive terms of uh, qi, which, uh, which measures the quality of lines, a quality of uh, measures the quality of the uh, uh, ink. And uh, this is uh, very continual to that uh, the, the concept of dust in uh, a mathematical face image. And any, given, any dust represents any given moment of a, a dynamic system, uh, the status of a dynamic system. I remember uh, in, the, uh, in Chinese art theory, when a critic, one critic says that uh, when qi uh, converges, uh, forms emerges, and this is the same applies to the dust. When dust uh, when the dust uh, converges to uh, some kind of pattern uh, uh, emerges because this uh, each dust is a resolution of uh, a, a compute, uh, calculation, uh, a resolution of a certain uh, equation. And uh, the thirdly is the one-stroke theory. And the actual meaning of the one-stroke theory in Chinese art theory is uh, still under debate. What's the exact meaning of that? It's still some elusive. And uh, I think my understanding that, uh, as you can see before uh, and demonstrate, you have to appropriate elemental strokes and then repeat them across the, across the images. And uh, uh, eventually, it will give up, uh, give uh, uh, overall uh, overall appearance of the uh, subject matters you want to depict. This is possible is because uh, natural forms, according to chaos theory, natural forms uh, has this property of self-similarity. Uh, it's some, somewhat uh, general natural forms uh, or fractal forms generate itself, scale itself uh, according to the original uh, configuration, uh, still, uh, still bears the original characteristics. And uh, uh, so, uh, the next concept is the opening and the closing. Basically, this concept in Chinese art is uh, talking about the intervals between the lines. When line links or, or breaks, they are opening or closing. This is uh, related to the topic of randomness um, because the choice of the lines broken or uh, link or broke is totally depends on artist's uh, preference. It's a uh, random. Uh, feature it, it creates the rhythm of the lines, and the randomness of the lines can be discussed. The randomness uh, can be discussed in uh, chaos theory as well, and uh, it related to the uh, rhythm. It related to the degree of the uh, randomness. And it, uh, lastly, uh, Chinese art always talking about uh, critics. Oh, uh, Chinese art critics always talking about the essence of these forms because none of the natural forms are identical even they are belongs to the same category. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you uh, um, summarize that? How do you capture the uh, 
essence of that. If you capture it right, uh, you, you're de depicting them right. But uh, so in, in chaos theory, in the notion of fractal, there is a, a irregularity in the, irregular, in the in irregularity. Uh, they are they're using this fractal dimension value to actually uh, disc, uh, talk, uh, measure the irregularities. Uh, it, the, this value ref, uh, reflects the complexity of the uh, irregular forms. So, so such as uh, the, uh, for example, music. And uh, uh, you, if you treat the music, the fluctuation of the music and the interval of uh, different uh, between the notes as kind of randomness. And uh, now we have the means to measure it by using the fractal notion or one on F uh, uh, fluctuation analysis. Uh, so each so each type of music can yield a very distinctive uh, values and distinctive uh, fee, uh, characteristics, and uh, such as in the charts, you can see uh, the, the music of traditional Japanese music or classic music of India or uh, sound of uh, folks, uh, Russian folks sound or American blues or different music from uh, like classic Beethoven's uh, Third Symphony uh, to the Beatles song. They all have this distinctive feature that uh, uh, now we can measure them. That's why we, our hearing, we can detect uh, the differences as the different uh, artistic uh, characteristics. And now we have the means to discuss the uh, irregular forms, such as the coastline of uh, uh, Britain. And the, uh, we can rank the irregularities of different uh, uh, fractal shapes, such as tree leaves. Different tree leaves use different distinctive uh, fractal dimensional values. So the line now be, can be discussed uh, through, uh, we can rank them. For example, the, uh, a straight line can be uh, one dimensional objects, but what, uh, what about uh, not so straight fluctuated lines or more irregular lines? And now can be discussed as different rank of, uh, uh, along the uh, fractal dimension. So the higher the number, the uh, complex, the irregular they are, the lines are. So this is very congenial to the Chinese uh, discussion of quality of lines. Uh, in Chinese art, they're always talking about the quality of lines. Uh, you've got the straight lines, uh, thick lines. You've got the lines with uh, very uh, irregular turns. You've got the rolling lines. Uh, and you've got, we're talking about lines uh, according to their uh, dryness or, or, or wet, wetness. So in, in essence, I think they are all talking about the de facto complexity of the, uh, of the uh, lines. And uh, if you look into the uh, um, uh, training manuals of Chinese paintings, they, they have all sorts of uh, uh, this sort of uh, uh, cluster of different uh, forms. Uh, this category is uh, all weeds. So uh, I personally uh, uh, measured them. Uh, each group uh, has very distinctive uh, uh, fractal values. So uh, it's all about uh, tuning your vision to, the, uh, to differentiate them. And the uh, uh, same applies to the uh, leaves of trees, cluster of trees and branches. And uh, same applies to the rocks as well. Uh, you can, you can measure the rocks outlines and the texture lines separately, if you like. And they all yield very, very uh, distinctive uh, values, uh, fractal value that reflects its complexity. So if you're doing it right, it, it seems to look uh, like, a, a, like a rock, like a cluster structures. So uh, well, nowadays, uh, scientists uh, speculate that uh, fractal dimension, uh, fractal property is, uh, uh, besides the color and the tune, is the third uh, parameters our vision responded to. For example, uh, here you can tell which ball is uh, more rougher or smoother than the other one. And you have multiple uh, visual clues to, to do that. But if, what if you deprive the uh, colors and tune, you can still tell. Why? Because uh, our vision responded to that uh, pattern, to the fractal pattern of that, and you can tell uh, instinctively which one is rougher than the other. 
And so, so uh, I put this quote here. So finding the human vision can apparently respond to fractal dimension is further indirect evidence that this is an important physical property that helps to describe the nature world. And so in, uh, to summarize, the, the Chinese art uh, is so, that's why uh, you, you don't need color, you don't need surface quality, you don't need the three dimensional uh, sense because it's all irrelevant. Uh, what they relish in is the uh, one aspect of that, that's, that is the uh, fractal property. What you lie down on the picture is a whole group of different type of uh, uh, brush marks that yield certain values that our vision responded to. And these marks, it's just like uh, musical notes, have distinctive values. And it's the tension between these uh, brush marks and the relationship of them that resemble a certain configuration of natural forms uh, that uh, um, defines the, the aesthetics and the appreciation of that. So like, like here, you can see the background is the uh, plum tree and the foreground is the branch tree. If you're doing it right, the, the contrast are established and the tension established. And uh, this kind of cultivation of aesthetics is perhaps the best demonstrated by another traditional, traditional form of art in Chinese culture, calligraphy. Uh, the calligraphy, uh, the Chinese character uh, has a long uh, history uh, stretching back to thousands of years. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail in this presentation. Uh, just uh, let you know that uh, uh, by the end of uh, Song Dynasty, the character, uh, Chinese character has uh, have developed into five major types of uh, fonts, as you can see here. Uh, namely, they are, uh, they are regular scripts, uh, running script, uh, 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 clerical script and uh, uh, cursive script and seal script. And uh, since then, uh, Chinese, Chinese calligraphy becomes a fully developed uh, form of art and there's no font uh, have been invented. Maybe it's because the um, printing technology has been invented. There's no uh, incentive to do that. And uh, interestingly, that's the main, that's the starting time when the painting becomes a major uh, art forms uh, among the intellectual circle. And uh, the writing of uh, Chinese character demands a very uh, finely tuned sense of proportion along some subtle uh, discrimination. And uh, this sense of fitness of form was called by some uh, dynamic asymmetry, so prized by the Chinese artists and scholar. A scholar Conceive, uh, a calligrapher is conceived of each character as a set into a nine great square. This integrated uh, the character's uh, disparate elements into a harmonious whole. And setting the character into half half and a quarter square destroyed the balance. Uh, so the, this nine great, uh, nine square unit is actually uh, in Chinese phrase, uh, phraseology called nine palace grid. And there's other grid system that helps the learners to grasp the balance of the uh, characters. As you can see, the, uh, this is a diagonal, diagonal grid. And uh, there are some new grid system that under the influence of Western notion of golden ratios, they, they have this to measure the, uh, um, to measure the uh, aesthetics, uh, the balance of the uh, Chinese characters. As you can see, the inner core rectangular is a golden ratio. Uh, the, the height and the width is a golden ratio. And uh, uh, the Chinese script, uh, the, the characters uh, have five major uh, font types. This is the most official one called the regular script established in Tang Dynasty. And this is uh, what we're going to analyze and examine. And these are the three examples of the towering figure uh, who, who, whose uh, calligraphy of a regular script considered to be most authentic and uh, beautiful. And it, it's in, uh, their influence uh, stretching uh, ever since uh, influenced the, the, the rest of the uh, practitioner of Chinese calligraphy. So that's why we're trying to examine them. Even within, even it's a regular script, you can see the distinctive uh, characteristics between uh, among these uh, calligraphers. Uh, they are, uh, the regular script is uh, used until uh, 
to this date. Uh, and the newspapers <coughs> and uh, official documents, they use this, uh, uh, they use this type of uh, font. And uh, the study of uh, Chinese calligraphy and its aesthetics uh, as varies. And mainly, uh, I, I summarized it into two aspects. And uh, this is one. And traditionally, the discussion and the criticism of Chinese calligraphy have, has, have focused on the biography of artists and the aesthetic appreciation of the artist's characteristics and its influence through the historical work, uh, either through uh, stone slabs, as the picture above, and also the model letter, the actual writing of the calligraphers. And uh, often the scholar tends to trace and, and identify the works in relation to the artist's biography and historical areas in order to trace and compare difference of different artists and uh, schools and styles, uh, such as Amy uh, McNair's study uh, has uh, elucidated elucidate that the importance of studying the historical engraved uh, calligraphy works in comparison to the opposite school of studying the model letters as a traditional faithful way of uh, authentication of Chinese calligraphy styles. And others uh, attempt to study the calligraphies in the lights of science, such as this Japanese uh, scientist trying to analyze the uh, Japanese, one, of, one type of Japanese calligraphies uh, using the uh, one on if fluctuation an analysis. Uh, the idea is uh, the, uh, when the, the calligraphy yields a certain uh, fluctuation pattern that are following to a certain range, and uh, this range is uh, associated to uh, when you use the same uh, one on if fluctuation analysis on human, uh, such as the uh, uh, heartbeat or brave, uh, brain waves. Uh, if we feel uh, pleasure, happy, uh, it fall into the same range. So he argues that, that the calligraphy actually um, has deemed to be beautiful because it, it, it falls into that uh, one, on the, uh, one on F fluctuation range. Uh, so our approach is that uh, we have this insight that uh, the, uh, there is a mathematical kinship between the ancient non-palace uh, non grid to the modern notion of box counting method. The, the idea of uh, having a character irregular uh, form against a grid system is uh, not so strange to um, uh, to the care theory, as we when we calculate the uh, irregular forms such as the uh, coastline of Britain, uh, we put it into a grid system. But the difference is that we use successive uh, different resolution of uh, boxes grid system to to calculate the uh, calculate the uh, outlines and eventually use the algorithm to come up with its fractal dimensional value. So this is what we're actually doing. Uh, we, uh, we try to use uh, successive bo uh, boxes uh, uh, based on the nine grid, uh, nine boxes, and to actually calculate the uh, fractal dimension of each uh, characters. And uh, uh, we have already, we already uh, constructed a program to measure this black and white distribution within the, a certain area that contains that character. And uh, each character was scanned into black and white digitized pictures and then um, processed by the program at pixel level. Uh, so the program crops the uh, picture according to its actual character's top, bottom, left, right boundaries within the picture and then calculates and records the number of black and white pixels. We also use the fractal dimension algorithm to determine the value of fractal dimensions of designated character. We also determine in the graphic centers and as an average horizontal and vertical position of the image pixels in the, uh, in the image. We also separate the character into nine boxes and uh, measure the count of the pixels in each of the nine boxes. In this way, we will have statistic data for later an analysis. We intend to use this to try to find the correlation uh, that might be used to identify the characteristics of the character and thus identify the author's style. And this is what we've done. Uh, we, uh, we just uh, imported the image and uh, process it into straight black and black and white, and uh, we uh, crop it and uh, put into um, four boxes or nine boxes, and uh, calculate the fractal dimension of that. Uh, we did a preliminary comparison. Uh, the front, the front, 
uh, image is the, uh, the character is actual writing of the uh, ancient uh, calligraphers. And uh, the, the beneath that, the, on the left is the uh, character I wrote, uh, try to imitate the style. So it already yielded a very distinctive uh, uh, values uh, between these two. And uh, my fractal, my writing, the fractal value is pretty much falling on 1.8 something. And uh, the original one is uh, falling on to 1.6. So uh, we, we're going to have some more uh, an analysis. And uh, the next step we're trying to do is uh, uh, do the outline and uh, trying to an analyze the outline, fractal dimension of outlines, and also as well as the center line, so that uh, we would capture the characteristics of the Earth's execution of the strokes, and uh, as well as its perception of the character forms. So uh, the methodology we used in our research is basic, basically three stages. And firstly, we quant uh, quantification. We digitize the samples from literature tradition of Chinese art, uh, li literature tradition of Chinese art, and uh, in particular, the graphic calligraphy of the Tang period and the art of later Song Dynasty, and determine the uh, uh, fractal dimension of the samples, categorize them based on the fractal dimension. And once we have that, we can uh, use a statistic uh, analysis to analysis to examine and identify the uh, aesthetic uh, factors from the data, such, a, uh, such as those based on the uh, an analysis of nine, box, uh, nine houses in the calligraphy, also silhouette, also symmetry, also grayscale and brush stroke and, and uh, analyze, uh, analysis, or some of the one on F fluctuation analysis. And then use uh, utilize the scanned image and ana uh, analysis to classify the differences, particularly those based on the fractal and chaos theory. And lastly, once we have all these data, we use this result uh, above result to build up a database. And uh, the, and based on that database, we can build uh, uh, identification or authentication or, or reproduction systems. And uh, so. At the moment, we are well within our plans. Uh, in the middle stage of our plans, we've uh, done the literature review. We've collected, uh, the, uh, digitized some of the examples, and do the uh, preliminary, uh, preliminary comparison and, and analysis. The next stage, uh, we're going to do uh, more an analysis, collecting these data, and do the statistic and analysis of that. We might need to try some preliminary, preliminary reproduction by producing some animation based on the styles and the stroke values. And we already submit some papers onto the, um, some, uh, some conferences. And, and uh, we hope to develop a, uh, some uh, algorithm that can reproduce the stroke uh, later on and try to find some encoding method. And uh, so in summary, we already, our research already uh, made some uh, preliminary result that reflects the differentiations of the designated Chinese calligraphy works. We need to push it further by analyze more works to build up database for further construction of identification systems. So that's uh, that's pretty much about my uh, studies. Thank you. For Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Thank you, Jinghua, uh, for a very interesting presentation. Uh, we have amongst us our deputy vice chancellor Angela Dell, so a very special welcome to her. My apologies for being late. I hope to just sneak in and nobody knows. <laughs> uh, the floor is now open to questions. Well, I'll I start. Can, with, sorry, I can start. Go ahead, Stephen. Um, um, a Ching. <coughs> Could you give us uh, a few details of the uh, the algorithm that you're using to to um, estimate the fractal dimension in the calligraphy images? Uh, it's it's just a standard uh, uh, the algorithm uh, used by various others. Uh, I forgot to bring the actual equation. It's actually it's just the uh, the log uh, algorithms uh, that. Um, uh, calculates the different resolution of the box uh, numbers, and then use the logarithm to to actually come up with uh, uh, that value. It's uh, it's not particular, and I, we haven't uh, constructed our own algorithm of that. Currently, we're just using the standard one to to, to calculate that. 
Yes, okay. Um, so it, <coughs> the number that you'd get would yeah. uh, depend on how um, like complex the, the outline of the, the brush strokes are, or, I mean, if, I mean, if you've got a, if it's just a, a smooth line, yeah. uh, you'd get a, a certain number. Yeah. Um, but if it was, um, uh, well, I guess fuzzy in some way because of the individual um, hairs in the brushes, yeah. the brush, you'd get a you'd get a, a higher value for the fractal dimension. Yes, <laughs> it depends on the resolution we scan the image. So we tend to use the very large, uh, re high resolution scan image to do that. Yes. Thus, yes. we capture the uh, more detailed uh, outlines of the brushes. Yes. And therefore, we can capture more characteristics of the uh, um, brush lines. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, just going back to something you said that uh, right at the start that there's um, that there's no perspective in traditional Chinese art. Yeah. Um, well, there was also no perspective in in Western art before the Renaissance, because people didn't understand. Uh, how perspective worked, and it wasn't until uh, Bruno Leschke um, discovered the laws of perspective projection in around the early 1400s that Western artists started to to use perspective in, in their art. Yeah, and it's, a, it's sort of a, it's a common thing that people often can't see things unless they un, unless they understand them. So it's not surprising in that way that that. Um, um, Chinese art didn't have any perspective in it because I don't think any, anyone was using perspective back uh, before the before the you know the 1400s. Yeah. That's why I said uh, when I'm talking about uh, uh, Western art, uh, what I mean is the uh, traditional uh, classic art since the Renaissance times. They yes. have some in intimate relationship with science since yes. then. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but Chinese art, uh, I don't really think uh, it's. Uh, some says Chinese art has a dynamic, kind of uh, uh, non-linear, multiple uh, perspectives. That's why they have this. Uh, they don't need some some frame. They all have a very long scrolls, either vertical or horizontal. My idea is that because they are discussing the forms under the fractal dimension, it's a fractional discrimination. So it's irrelevant to the 3D space. It's all about uh, how do you compare microscopically uh, what are the, the, these forms, uh, uh, fractal value, fractal properties. Yes, well, I can see that the, you know, the, fractal, um, uh, the fractal dimensions is, is not going to depend on whether there's perspective in the image or not. But I, I think maybe, uh, yeah. Except, except perhaps if things are getting smaller, as they as they're getting further away, then uh, then you can get uh, that actually may, there will be perhaps more more detail in the image, which then could actually push up the, the fractal dimension. But I, I'm 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 not sure. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with what a lot of this art looks like that uh, that you that you've been talking about. Uh, maybe I can show you some more. Uh... Yeah. Yes, I think um, what might be useful is if you show the animation that you produced in the past. All right. Because uh, <clears throat> it's, it's based on this, this concept of, uh, of fractals and, and basically the, uh, the, the, the brush stroke as being the, I guess, the, the basis for, for art. Yes. in Chinese art and it, it it's very interesting because it takes these basic brush strokes and animates them mm. and produces um... I can't see the uh, the cursor where is the cursor also uh, the the other factor is in, uh, in uh, Chinese art form for example the uh, Chinese characters normally you have uh, eight or something like that is elements, and everyone can use that. You press tab. Uh, sometimes you press tab. The, the factor is different person, person work, work in their style. When you combine them together, the balance of a character, and all the together, many characters together, you know, the general uh, presentation to the audience is different. 
from different authors. So that is a, that, that is very hard to measure. But this time, change, what the chain is going to do is uh, to try to use the uh, fractal uh, measure to measure those uh, different authors art, artwork, and then build up a database later on to identify. I got that. So we appear to have lost the cursor on the screen. Yeah. So this is this is. Okay, thanks. Could I just ask a question then, and as a complete novice, novice in this, but just really interested in, in this. Does that mean then that you could use this technique perhaps when you've built up an appropriate database so that if I was to go and buy a piece of, of Chinese calligraphy yeah. that was supposed to be by a particular artist and say written at a particular time, yeah. you could use this to tell whether that was genuine or a fake? Yes, by you could your yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 That's, that is one well of the of I can't see the current whether we achieve it or not, no, that no, is one of, the of things. Yes, yes, yes. It's one of the things we do. At the moment, uh, basically, it's relied on the experts yes. of, the, uh, of the Chinese calligraphers and their judgment of the style. Uh, the just, just use Maybe those. if we All can we come up do with some sort of measurement. Yeah, measurement. Yeah. 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 At yeah. least we have some, yeah. 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 We have some uh, uh, valid measure. Can you see the animation in other campuses? Yeah, it's fine here. Okay, yes, it's fine, thanks. I created this uh, animation for my masters, and uh, it's just using the idea of uh, using the elemental strokes. So these, in, in these animations, you don't have actually uh, realistic models. Uh, it requires very li limited modeling. Uh, all you need is uh, I use the particle system to construct the, um, the strokes, and uh, just uh, configure it the forms into several basic strokes I already here some kind of uh, matches resembles the natural forms mm -hmm. such as trees and uh, animal forms maybe we should jump a little bit further maybe People can keep asking questions. We can just let that run, <laughs> even though it's going to be hard, isn't it? <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Is how many years in the past do you go back? Are you separating different eras, like Song Dynasty, Tang, Tang Dynasty, for yeah. different kinds of pictures? Are you trying to group the pictures, or you are doing it just one go? Uh, I'm just uh, trying to collect the period of Tang, and uh, for the calligraphy, and. Uh, uh, for the uh, paintings, I'm trying to use the uh, Song Dynasties. The reason for that is uh, it's the calligraphy ev uh, evolution of the calligraphy somewhat uh, uh, stabilized in Tang Dynasty, and uh, the regular script becomes established. And uh, and the paintings start as a fully developed art form start from Song Dynasty. So maybe so that's why I choose this particular two period to actually to sample them. Yes. Could you put the same, oh, the same sort of 
uh, methodology upon Islamic calligraphy? If this one uh, works, it should be worthwhile. Okay. Has Islamic calligraphy changed from year to year? I mean, um, different times yes. uh, changed. Like there have been first the Martians. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So it changed, so it has to be distinguished. I, yeah. I guess I understand. And, and, and the beauty of this is that you, as you say, you've had a, 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 a more or less start. You've had, you've had a very defined form for the, that calligraphy in the period that you are studying here. Yeah. So that's a very good benchmark. And yeah. the other thing is, within that, there is some well-known questions or controversies about who was the author of which work, yes. yeah, and, and yeah, uh, you, yeah. may, you may be able to shed light on Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah. 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 Ching, uh, yes, in, yes. In your presentation, you mentioned some other studies in this area. There was um, uh, Azawa's fluctuation analysis of Japanese calligraphy, for instance. Yes. Are you aware of any other studies or, or anyone else doing similar work to what you're proposing? Uh, I didn't find uh, any other studies of Chinese calligraphies using modern signs to explain them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found some, this is uh, what I found from Japanese side. <laughs> they, they have some this, this kind of attempt. But in China, Chinese study, they always uh, using the chi uh, using the method I told, as I said before, uh, discuss the style and uh, the tradition according to uh, authors' uh, biography and the historical background context, not in the lights of uh, science. Uh, yeah. So that's why I'm trying to uh, blank and to fill in the gaps, fill in the blanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you also mentioned. Um, some researchers calculating the fractal dimension of certain styles of music. Is there a lot of research going on in that area, or is that also in its infancy, that, that kind of it, it, This has been done probably in 90s, uh, already established as a way of explaining the uh, characteristics of music. And I, I, it's not <coughs> quite related to our study. Our, basically, what we deal with is the visual. Yes. And yeah, so I, I use that as a kind of uh, evidence that uh, you, you can detect s s detect uh, the uh, artistic styles by using these uh, same principles, same yeah. methods. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I found it fascinating. Um, the whole thing was very, very thoughtful. Yeah, yeah, my, that fascinates me as well <laughs> when I first <laughs> as I was said, oh, that's, that's the reason we can detect. Our brain already have this using this kind of knowledge. And they, as, as some scientists speculate that the reason we can detect different type of trees by just a glance is because we have to compare very limited data in our brains. Yes. And uh, not the, and like, like a, this is a very complex study, like using the computer to recognize patterns, recognize forms. Maybe this is the, uh, this is the uh, why we are our brain just compare just one single single parameters and then you you can you detect the forms. In a word, uh, the essence of the trees. Yeah, the essence of the trees. So that's why I believe that when the Chinese art critics talking about the essence of forms, it's the this invariable parameters they are comparing with. They are talking mm -hmm. about. Uh, lo looking at music. Up. By comparing it with images, what you're doing, you re there are uh, there's one similarity. Um, <coughs> music's a, a one-dimensional stream yes. of sound, which has been analysed for its its, its fractal properties. Um, I think um, early 90s. Uh, what you're doing is is looking at, at images which, which are 2D. Yes. So so I mean uh, you you. Um, um, you're looking at you, you've just in, you've increased the dimensionality. You've gone from 1D to 2D. Yeah. But other than that, it's it's quite a similar similar process. Yeah. That, that's why I think that's why the Chinese art uh, narrowed this uh, aesthetic aspects into black and white, basically. Uh, so added some colors, just uh, it's just uh, additional. Uh, Aesthetics. Basically, they are talking about black and white relationship, black and white patterns of the ink. Yes.
Any further questions? But just a general comment. I thought that I thought that you presented it uh, a very plausible argument for the the connection between ancient Taoism and and modern fractal theory and chaos theory. Like. I'm no expert in either of those areas. I have an undergraduate degree in maths, and as you know, I teach in design, but I'm, I'm no expert in fractals, and I'm no expert in, in Chinese art, but I f found myself being able to understand and follow your argument very well, and I thought it was, it, it's a very plausible hypothesis that you're putting forward there, and, and it's, it's uh, yeah, just quite remarkable to see that you've got some preliminary results already. Thank you. Yes, yes, I thought that was very good too. Thank you. So, um, shall I retreat? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, Jinghua. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. I just saw the title and I thought, I don't know anything about anything about sort of calligraphy or how it's made up, but I, I know, I know it's beautiful. It appeals to one's mind. I'm a geneticist, so we don't do that much. <laughs> but, but, but thank you, that was a very good explanation and it was a really interesting way of presenting the information, so, so thank you. Thank you. I understand genetics is quite complex, can't you apply that kind of recognition thing? Uh, not that I know of. Um, it's, it's, there was no oh, shape or pattern here. Uh, yeah, oh, really? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be good. Genetics, but there's also, it's very there is also, in the same way, if you're looking at a pathology test, so you would look at a new oh, cross growing, and you would, in your mind, you would obviously run a whole lot of computations subconsciously and say, that's better than that. It's a bit like looking at different people's calligraphy and say, a whole load of things tell me that belongs to that thing. So I guess it's much the same sort of process, but, but not quantified like this in a mathematical way. And that's fascinating that you've been able to sort of break that down into something which you know, obviously, obviously, we pick up in our brain, as you say, you just pick up the essence of it. Um, but that's that's a mathematical way of looking at looking at things. It's fascinating. Um, Ching, just before before you go, just just looking looking ahead a little bit, you've got a fair bit of um, um, uh, programming to do. Yes, with this thesis. Some of it's um, like like an, uh, analyzing. Um, images and, and and trying to like distinguish um, who who did something, um, or, or you know authenticate um, um, paintings. Um, other um, another part of it is more more generative. You, you mentioned that you you would hope at some stage to be able to um, uh, use use algorithms to generate calligraphy and and uh, and, and artworks. Now, um, have you thought about you know? What's going to be the most difficult thing to do here, and and or have you thought about some of the methodologies, the programming techniques that you may, may use um, uh, later on in the thesis to do some of this work? Yeah, I think I think uh, to the uh, come up with some uh, algorithm to generate the strokes will be very difficult, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I'm not so sure yet uh, what, what kind of. Uh, um, algorithm it, it, it's going to be at the moment uh, but uh, I, I I can sense that because uh, for example the strokes the calligraphy strokes uh, if you analyze that it has eight basic strokes uh, the rest of the uh, writing is just uh, using the different eight type of strokes in different ways there, there are another property of writing the Chinese character is the the stroke has orders Stroke has orders, you, which when it first start first and second, and st stroke has direction as well. They have a blunt head and then a sharp end, something like that. So I, I can sense uh, maybe uh, from these properties, and um, we can come up with a, a kind of a um, solution to uh, program it. And uh, based on the an, an analysis of the fractal dimension, when we do it reverse way, that's what I mean by reverse. When we do a reverse way, yes. we program the stroke and uh, limited the stroke's uh, uh, size or something to, to that, to match up that fractal uh, dimensional value. Then thus help to create the similar styles of the, uh, uh, of the authors. Yeah. Yes. In fact, definitely. 
uh, oh, sorry, uh, analyzing something is yeah. one thing. Yeah. Generating is yeah, another thing. Quite a different thing. So I think um, you you'll find that. Um, well, with all programming, it always takes longer than you think it's going to do. Yes. So I think uh, uh, this could end up being um, uh, a major part of the thesis, if you if you wanted it to to the because the uh, uh, yeah I can see this will be the most <coughs> difficult thing that you'd have to do. Yes. So have you got a you've got a sort of a, I think you, you gave a, a time frame here in, in the documentation. I just forget the details. I mean, are you, are you plan, well, when are you plan when you planning to start doing some of the the, the, the generative um, algorithm yeah. development? Yeah, for the for the next uh, year and a two, uh, that's what the main task of we, what we're doing. Sure, yeah. it's, a, it's actually a very good question because. Uh, Identifying or analyzing and reflection is, is totally different. For example, if even you identify, you even you have a huge database with the fractal dimensions for eight of strokes, but if you are going to produce a single word, single Chinese character, it's difficult because the direction is, you know, 300 degrees the direction. Where you start, where you you move this this rock to, and that way, you, and, and also if if I were a character uh, uh, consists of eight different strokes, so the size of that, you know, the size of that, and, and the orientation of that, the combination of the huge, yes. So to reproduce that is very difficult. Yes, I agree with that. It's in in fact I suspect. That, that almost falls into the realm of work that comes out of the thesis. Um, in the sense that um, <clears throat> that there is a lot being planned to be done. Um, there is a limit in what you need, what you do in a, in a single thesis. I mean, I, I suspect that some of the more difficult elements of this generation, particularly when it's applied to art, uh, I think that's something which you'll be working on probably for the next 10 years. Several postdocs down the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, however, the, the calligraphy, I suspect, is a bit of an easier problem to solve um, because it's really about reproduction rather than creation. <laughs> And so it's, um, it's a question really of, of codifying the strokes in some meaningful way such that you can reproduce a particular set. Uh, that I think is, is pretty much just, well, to be blunt, hack work. <laughs> My understanding has been that this is basically focused on analysis. Yes. Scope of this is focused on analysis, not on creation or reproduction. Yeah, perhaps. I'm... It's on analysis, but there will also be an artistic component. Um, Ching will be producing an animation um, as, a, as one of the outcomes of the thesis. Uh, it's, um, in a way, it's not a computer science thesis. It's more of a multimedia thesis where what you had, or, or, or an arts thesis, even if you like, where you've got a thesis component, which would be quite strong, but there is also a production or an artifact that gets produced, which demonstrates the outcomes. Do you look forward to seeing that? Well, <laughs> like that, yeah. Have a look at the full version of that. It's brilliant. Um, yeah. He won, uh, what was it, first prize in SIGGRAPH for that, which is no mean feat. So, uh, yeah. And uh, the best is yet to come. It's the, the last half is the best bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So we intend to do something, something like that. I think, uh, I think that would be that would be a great contribution. <clears throat> and Ching is a very good student. I wish, wish we had more like him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in some ways, it's it's a good thing that this. This um, area that you're, you're looking at is, is so big, 
um, because ideally you want to finish your, your PhD having more stuff to work on than you did when you started it. And I can I can see this this happening um, um, with with your with your thesis. I'd um, also like to congratulate you on your your um, your, your win at, at SIGGRAPH. That that's very good. That's the that's the top graphics conference and probably one of the top awards for um, for non-commercial artwork. So that that's very good work on your part. Thank you. Thank you. I I couldn't. Um, I've seen. I've got this on my my computer at home because Ron sent it to me. It, it's really really great great to watch. Thank you. So I, I'm going to. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.